TSS Rovers look to continue their strong play at home today, losing just once in all competitions in six games played this season. However, North Vancouver side altitude stand in their way as they look to climb out of the basement of the League One BC standings. Rovers altitude next on TELUS and YouTube. This is the League One BC featured match. Good afternoon. Welcome to beautiful Central Park in Burnaby. I'm your match commentator, Gideon Hill. This is the third ever installment of the Iron Workers Derby, named after the landmark that uh, separates these two squads. Today, Altitude Football Club make the trek over the Iron Workers Bridge to take on the Rovers. Altitude riding high after a 3 1 win over Nottsmont at home on Wednesday, their first win of this midway point of League One BC 2023 season. Meanwhile, Rovers looking to get bounced here by altitude they have only lost once in six games in all competitions this year at swangard altitude football club tss rovers it's the league one feature match on telus and youtube coming up here live from burnaby luck today so i'm here with the head coach of tss rovers darren rusher and you're tied for the league lead in fewest goals conceded but the offense has really come in fits and starts this season how are you trying to find more consistency on that side of the pitch uh starting early uh getting out their uh, penalty area earlier in the game uh, i think while we preach patience a lot sometimes we take that a little too literally so uh, i think getting in behind and getting around their penalty area early helps us get to their goal a little bit better we're now at the halfway point of the season what are you most looking for improvement from as we hit the stretch run? Uh, just a bit more consistency in the final third. I think uh, we do everything else well. We defend well. We build well. We have to start being a little bit more ruthless around the friendly area, for sure. Thank you so much. Good. I'm here with the head coach of Altitude FC, Fali Bass. And it's been a tough first half of the season for your team, but you finally got that first win earlier this week. What are you from that game are you hoping to carry over today? Yeah, every, every single game, like, from now on, I, like I said before, it's important game for them. So every game are important. So I think, um, yeah, we did start really slow because of conditions, because of players coming back late, injuries, etc. But now, I think since a couple of weeks, we're getting along together. So the boys are, you know, are, are, are getting in shape again. So which is good. It's good to see that. You're going up against a very strong defensive team today. Does that change your approach at all in terms of how you try to break them down versus another team? Yeah, I mean, I, I know that they, they've been doing great defensively. So uh, we need to find a way. We need to find a way to turn around that, right? Um, and I think we did it last Wednesday that we showed that we can score goals. So we have great chances to score goals. Like, to be honest, like every single game, we do great chances every game. The only thing is like we're just missing the finishing part, right? But uh, last Wednesday it was great because we did have a couple of chances and did we and now it's score. So hopefully today is going to be on our way. Thank you. Good luck today. No problem. Thank you. Starting with the goalkeeper, number... We're all prepped and ready to go. Here are the starting 11s. First for the home side Rovers, they make four changes to their last game. A victory last week against Rivers FC, including in goal. Connor Adams appears in his first game since April the 29th. The home opener against Natsumat. That seems so long ago as the Rovers look to get another three points at home. They've been absolutely rolling. Look for number 11, Eric Edwardson, to be a main man today. He leads the league in goals this year. Does double E. Up to three goals already is the Rovers in the black strip with the gray and red running up and down from shoulder to waist. And the all black socks as well. Altitude in the skyline blue with the accents of the North Shore Mountains on it. And the white jersey numbers moving from left to right on your broadcast screen is big Nick Brett, the defender from Germany, moving, moving along the near side for Kyle Jones. And former Altitude player Masoud Habibullah on the ball that one rolls out in a Throne coming up here for TSS. Nico Papakriakopoulos, as we look at the teams here for Altitude, 
They as well make a couple of changes from midweek against Natsumat. Declan Fremont and Connor Hillebrand, two very good midfielders, draw in for Lucas Booth and Athos Sikera. Big loss. Two players both missing for each team today is Sikera, the leading goal man, with Sairub Sairub for altitude and as well for TSS. Mateo Polisi, their talisman, out today with an injury. So both teams missing key players. Will that be the difference? We'll have to see. This one following a fantastic game prior. Won't spoil it for you, but what a game it was between the two women's sides for these two teams as well. As that ball played into the altitude back line, big defender Sako Konate misfires on a pass forward and went off of Masood Habibula and a throw in here for Brennan Bangambi of Altitude FC who opened the scoring on Wednesday against Natsumat. Rovers have to be wary of that. The North Van Base side Altitude Football Club had the lead inside of five minutes, 2 nothing over Natsuma FC and Mike Mosier's squad on Wednesday. Midweek match at Kinsman. Collected here by Anastasia Hale. will try and move it up the touchline. Collected by Fremont. Watched by Papakriakopoulos. And ball will again go out a stop start beginning to the first three minutes here from Swangard Stadium. A sweltering 23 degrees here in the lower mainland for this one. Glad you're with us on YouTube and tell us for this League One BC featured match. Throw in here for Big Matthew Marshall, who spent some time at McGill University. So I'm back now for Spichenko. Four by Connor Adams. He's going to want to see the ball early in his hands here after not playing since April 29th, as I mentioned, against Natsumat. That was a scoreless draw on that day. This was Azo Shavula moving up the left side for tricky winger Sairub. Sairub, and you see there a foul by Kyle Jones and a Whistle blown for the referee there. Free kick for the visitors just in front of that far touch line there inside the Rovers half as Aheo felt the worst of that one there. Down in some discomfort holding his back. Speaking of the officials this afternoon, referee is Joey Ratcliffe. First assistant referee Theo Detrition. Second assistant referee Chris Harrop. And your fourth official today is Francesco Scaglioni. There's a hail on pitch there, but you see this tackle come flying in from Kyle Jones. Cleared the feet out from under a hail, and it might be a lucky man, and I'll get a yellow card there. Kyle Jones is this one pushed wide by Adams, and Van Gabby will collect here for the visitors. Now Marshall just in front of this touchline, in front of the Rovers bench. Tidy move past Kyle Jones will put a shape ball to the top of the 18, and that one finds Syrup Syrup all the way back for his captain, big Nathan Walters. Wiz Shavula. Good outside back. Him and Van Gamby were the main men last year on the outside for altitude. As evidenced by their great finish to the year last year as Tyler Dillon defended by his former teammate Syrup. Syrup there wins a throw for his squad in the, to the right of Connor Adams. On bouncing, Tyler Dillon misjudged it, now reads it off the grass. And now Syrup on the ball. Good defending there by Tyler Dillon. Concedes a throw, but Really good job to usher that one out of play and a throw-on coming up for the altitude. Tied for leading goal scorer. Or tied for leading goals, rather, make that to Sairub. Sairub with Athos Sikher, who again meant misses out today. With Shavula now going all the way back for Konate just inside his own half. Hit his face, it looked like, as Escobar applying the pressure. And Walters will deal with it into the Rovers' half as it bounces into the 18-yard box and to the right of the Rovers' keeper, dressed in all neon green today, so you can't miss him if he's on the ball. Here's Nick Barrett, who is important to that Rovers backline in the two games in the Canadian Championship against Pacific and Valor. Fortunately, losing to Pacific in that uh, tough game in the island. 2-0. That has really spurred their dominance at home and overall in the league for TSS. Just one row game play. That was a 1-0 loss to the Whitecaps in the last featured match a couple of weeks ago at Kenwood's Field, but looking to turn the tides today. Neither of these teams have actually won in their games in the featured match this season. Altitude losing to Rivers FC men 4-1, and the Whitecaps beating the Rovers, as mentioned, a couple of weeks ago, 1-0. Kyle Jones in the ball here will play it quickly off a free kick for Danilo Smichenko. Clips into the 18, and there's Sako Kanate to head clear. Only as far as Kyle Jones as he takes a half volley strike that goes to the right of Trevor Schneider, the altitude keeper, who's been in the team of the week for League One BC twice this year. He's dressed in orange as well, so 
not uh, hard to miss the two keepers today. Shavula will take the throw into that far side quickly for his teammate who controls the ball in midfield, that being Bernardo Elas. As he turned it over there to Kanate in a vicious tackle by Gabe Escobar, tenacious left winger. Had some time with Halifax Wanderers in the Canadian Premier League last season. Did Gabe Escobar released and now back with TSS. This is the stepping stone to the next level. And we saw guys from TSS last year. Anthony White gave Escobar move on to the next level. A couple from altitude as well, including Leo Ann, who is here today in an altitude shirt, but he signed overseas as well. So guys moving on to the next level. This is the stepping stone. As I asked Darren Rusher about that earlier in the week saying it's important to face that adversity here because it comes even stronger in the pros where you have to sometimes be a bench player or not even in the 18 and just ride that adversity and do well in training, get yourself into the match day roster. And that's kind of what has been the voice this year for guys like Escobar, Polisi, Edwardson, Mejia as well, trying to get to the CPL. Obviously lots of eyes on those guys after the run in the Canadian Championship, Connor McMillan as well. Really a lot of these guys on this TSS and Altitude squad that you can throw your, the name in the hat for a CPL job. Beautiful switch to the play from Dylan for Eko Papakriakopoulos. Van Gamby was there defending. Papakriakopoulos slides in. On the ball now, Kyle Jones. Tackles flying here. That's what you expect in a derby. Not much separates these two squads except a bridge. So lots to play for today, both Size have fans in attendance. The Swan Guardians in full force on my right and a monstrous side altitude flag down to my left. Just to the right there of Trevor Schneider is pursuing that ball was Tyler Dillon. Good control by Trevor Schneider, the keeper here, who's part of the Highlanders last year. In League One BC, one of a number of players in this league jumping ship. Matthew Marshall, the tall player fouled by Jones, his second one here, and he might get away with the yellow. Referee Joey Radcliffe speaking to the altitude bench saying, I hear you. As it was a foul clear as day on Jones, and it's his second last few minutes, but doesn't get a card for that one here in the ninth minute. Another free kick for Altitude at Football Club here. It's towering Sacco Konate will stand over it. Konate raced in Paris, moved to the United States, had a training stint with Colorado Rapids' second team. MLS next Pro League in 2022. Throwing now for Dylan of TSS. Kyle Jones here doesn't take any prisoners, as you see there. Marshall <laughs> not happy with that one as he hit the deck. Syrub and a one-on-one -on -one there with Dylan. Watch out for that matchup on the left side for altitude. Syrub will win his side a throw, a first of the match here. Dogged determination. By the returnee from last year, Syroop. Syroop struggled with injury, but he was key in the game on Wednesday. Scored a goal. Two on the season. Corner kick coming up here for the team in Sky Blue today. Just one in front of Connor Adams, the Rovers keeper. That's Brandon Bangambi. Syroop will take the delivery in towards Bangambi. Punched clear fearlessly by Adams. Back up in the air there for Aheo. Knocks it down right to Walters. And it looks like Papakirikopoulos will let it go, but Bangambi applied the pressure. An offside flag goes up on altitude's number two, Bangambi. Free kick coming up for the Rovers here, just inside their own 18, it looks like, just in front of the Swan Guardians, who are out in full force today. You'll get a look at them here in the background. And there's Smichenko. They have... Uh, Upgraded themselves to tents in the last few games, so despite the uh, warm weather, they have some shade, thankfully. Here's Zohar for Masood Habibullah. Beautiful turn. Fremont came in, but met well by Escobar. And now Habibullah will control inside the altitude half. Draped all over him was Anastasia Hale. Jones goes back for Zohar. Now one touch from Habibullah for Connor McMillan. Masood Habibula trying to flick it on back for McMillan. Van Gamby away towards Fremont. Aheo will go back for Fremont, who plays it to half for Connor Hildebrandt. And that one rolled past Fremont for a TSS throw here. And Papakirikopoulos, again, a lot of this play channels through this left side for TSS. And Papakirikopoulos as Barrett will control for Smichenko. Long ball 
shape towards Edwardson and Schneider grabs it and goes through Schneider there to Edwardson. I don't think I heard the referee's whistle, but I think he has now just said to Schneider one more, and that's uh, a yellow for Edwardson. Maybe even Schneider came out to meet Edwardson in a dangerous play, as always, when the, those two players collide. Kanate's long hopeful ball will just roll out here to this near touchline. It'll be a throw-in for, again, Papa Kriakopoulos, who has spent some time with SFU Reds. As now referee Joey Radcliffe will make, over, make his way over there to Eric Edwardson, a little warning. The third-year Rovers man, former Portland pilot of the NCAA, and now trying to make his way to the next level again after spending some time in German third division. McMillan trying to jump to that ball, and a foul there on Masood Habibullah, and referee didn't like the extra word from Kanate. As Escobar tries to switch the play, sprays it across the pitch, but Wiz Shavula stepped in well for altitude. Keeps the ball. Had Elaz in support, goes all the way back for Nathan Walters. And now Trevor Schneider for altitude will control the ball just outside his 18. Kanate, a heavy touch by the big center back. Knocked down by Escobar. Flag did go up here on the near side out of play as McMillan was, was on a half breakaway. But the referee blew the play dead and a quick throw in from Escobar, but a little too quick as the ball was still in the pitch here. Habibullah was in an advantageous position. But it'll now be a throw in for Escobar as he and Papa Krikopoulos have combined really well on this left side early on in the first 13 minutes. Off the head of Kanate for Bangambi. Fremont there will nicely flick it on for Hildebrand who's playing as a out and out striker here today. As a high foot doesn't get called. Fremont plays it through Bangambi. Might be high on the defense. Grab by Adams there. And had to make that save to Connor Adams as his speedy Bangambi. I mentioned it as evidenced by his big goal on Wednesday against Natsuma. They're getting 40. He's a right back predominantly, but he uh, played as a right winger there to the returning right back for altitude. Right now on the ball for TSS. Wide left for Jones, now Escobar. Tidy ball for Kyle Jones. Those two on the pitch for the Rovers' triumph in League One BC last year as they were champions. But Altitude will have something to say about that today. Their first matchup of the season. First of back-to-back -back as well. They play next Sunday at Kinsman Field. One in 3.30 kickoffs. Altitude took four of six points away of, from TSS last year. Pardon me. 3-1 win at home and nil-nil job, but interestingly enough in that first game, 3-1 last year Masood Habibullah was on Altitude's squad at the time, scored two goals against TSS and jumped ship here to TSS this year scored his first two goals as a rover in his last appearance against Unity May 20th as it was a 4-0 win for the Rovers here scored 11 goals in their last three home games conceding just one that ball channeled through for Tyler Dillon. Rolls out in behind Schneider. And a goal kick here for the visiting team. We're going to have to manage the heat. Today, their third game in a week. Spoke to Fally Bass about that this week. He said he, he's had to rely on squad rotation. He has a deep squad of 25 plus. He said last Saturday was quite warm at home. Had to make rotations Wednesday due to injuries and fatigue against Natsumat. And they are confident that today they're going to be able to rotate. And just the two changes, so you expect uh, a lot of substitutes here coming on in the second half. Including Caleb Valance and Adrian Poor make their first appearance on the 18 this season for Altitude Football Club. Escobar lays and plays into the Altitude half. Schneider read the bounce well. And it is sometimes difficult to read graphs here at Swangard Stadium. Walters now for a hail. Tidy move past Edwardson. Jones stepped in well. Now there's Bernardo Ilas back for Konate. Konate looking long for Van Gambi. Ball bounces in front of him and Papakrit Kopoulos. And a urged on there was Van Gambi by Fally Bass. Always vocal. And you have to like the altitude response here to the Rovers' attack. It's been pretty even so far through 16. 
Marshall with a quick throw for Fremont. Matthew Marshall for Bankambi. Top of the 18, just out of the way of Syrub, who did well to shift infield there from his left wing position. Can play really anywhere over the front four or five positions. Can Syrub. Bankambi trying to win a towering header there. He might win this ball. He will. Just in front of this corner flag. And shoved down by Papa Kriakopoulos. No call from the man in the middle, Joey Ratcliffe, as Escobar finds McMillan. And now Ali Zohar for Jones. Now Barrett. Spichenko is Zohar ahead of him. Said elects to go to Tyler Dillon in that far touchline. And Dillon, the speedy right back, trying to move his way to the 18. Just out of the way of Masoud Habibullah. And now Fremont to the... Tenacious midfielder, little step over move. Played at FC Mets and FC Fowley. Did Declan Fremont, a returnee from last year. Draws into the squad today alongside Hildebrand, as mentioned. The two changes for altitude. Marshall and a free kick here just inside his own half. Going to be a word here to the bench from Joey Ratcliffe. It's a yellow card for a substitute here of Altitude FC. Don't see that very often. Often it's the color of red for a player with words to the referee from the bench. Spally Bass wants an explanation from fourth official Francesco Scaglioni. Been in charge of a couple of games here at Swangard this season for Rovers men's and women's games. Schneider out left for Ethan Walters. Zazo Shavula finds Syru, but the ball went out of play. Edwardson will try and get his team off to the races quickly here. Set Alex to find Dylan all the way back for Danilo Spichenko. Now Barrett. Ball playing center back. Finds Zohar. Brave play by Barrett to release the pressure for Kyle Jones, McMillan. Beautiful ball wide. There's Edwardson. Happy Bull in space in the middle. Walters clears it away. But if he was a little bit to the left, there would have been a dangerous ball for Trevor Schneider to deal with. As a great ball put into the area there by Eric Edwardson. He's not just a goal scorer. As you see there, he whips it in on his right boot. And Walters swept that one away swiftly. But, man, that could have been going the wrong way in a hurry if Walters was in a different position there. Corner kick for Kyle Jones, who's got that sweet left foot. A pretty jumbled up six-yard box here in the altitude area. Is that one punched away by Schneider, but right to Hildebrand. He'll try and set his team off in the counter. Finds Syrub, watched by his opposite seven, Connor McMillan. Didn't win the ball fairly, deems referee Joey Ratcliffe. And again, Kyle Jones, the man stared down by Ratcliffe. Lucky to not get away with one there. A two get away with one there. His third foul already in this match, Kyle Jones. Spent some time with SFU, a teammate of Ali Zohar, among others, on this TSS team. And the Calgary Foothills back in the USL League two days when the Rovers were in that league. And Will Cromack and Colin Elm said, we like that guy, want to sign him, we hate playing against him. And Jones signed to the inaugural League One BC team last year, was influential, scoring a penalty in the final. En route to that 2-1 uh, victory over Natsuma Football Club. Papagakopoulos in the throw here. Fremont ahead of him as Habibullah shows short. Habibullah's strong play back for Kyle Jones. And now Nicholas Barrett has got a lot of the ball early on. A lot of this play has come through this left side for both teams, really. Syrub hasn't been the most dangerous man in the pitch yet. For Altitude, as he looks to change that right away, Elaz wins the ball fairly for Anastasia Ajeo. Syrub in space to the left. That's where the ball goes. Ajeo puts it through for Syrub. Dylan trying to recover here, but uh, one of the leading scorers in Altitude will play it back for Elaz. Throw now going the way of TSS as Dylan will march over to take it. Who's a part of this Altitude squad last year. Formed a really good partnership, by the way, with Nathan Walters, the captain of Altitude. But uh, like Habibullah elected to play across the Iron Workers Bridge this season with 
the Burnaby-based TSS Rovers. Right now back for Smichenko. Jones up the pitch for Papakriakopoulos. Bounces into the 18, just outside the 18 for altitude. And again, a very active Trevor Schneider will have to play that one away. But it will be a throw in it. This I thought it was will be a free kick, pardon me, just outside the altitude 18. Let's look at Schneider as mentioned, a Highlander of last year and team of the week for League One BC, the men's side twice this year. So he knows how to put his name on a game. And the team of the week for that matter. Abby Bull has been relatively quiet so far. This is his type of game, though. Ball on the ground, chasing down altitude players, using his physicality to try and win the ball. Schneider to his left for Walters. Walters ball lacking to Shavula and a throw in for Edwardson. Quickly to find McMillan. Connor McMillan to the 18 of altitude, trying to run to the back line. Thought he was fouled by Shavula. McMillan furious there at the referee, but not even a blink of an eye from Joey Radcliffe. And it'll be a throw in here for Dylan as McMillan getting into talking to for his egregious remarks there. Thought he was pulled down by Hale as it was for altitude. Can I see that one again, Mike? As there is Hale coming through McMillan and maybe a bit of a shout there for McMillan. Here's Zohar. Ahead for Edwardson. Could not keep it in. Elaz now for Shavula. Walters towards half for Hildebrandt. Nice touch off the chest, and he'll put his team in possession here. Fremont for the quick bang Gamby. Overlapping run from Marshall, and a lot of pace here. Toward jaw by Marshall to get there. To firm tackle by Escobar wins the ball. Textbook tackle from Gabe Escobar as this match turns into an end-to-end -end affair. And to end affair, rather, as Marshall shoves Escobar after the play was ended. And a quick throw from Escobar for Papakriakopoulos. Brett now for Spachenko. McMillan, Edwardson, those two combined really well. McMillan, a day one rover and owner as well. The first supporter's own club in League One BC history and Canadian soccer for that matter. Jones delivery for Papa Kriakopoulos on the left channel. Him and Escobar combining well, and that was a fantastic tackle here by Escobar. Look at the pace to track back and make that tackle on Marshall as Marshall goes flying, but that's a 10 out of 10 play by Escobar. But what a run as well for Marshall to get himself into that position. Walters missed it. Edwards in behind the fence for TSS. Masood Happy Bula will score against his former team, his third of the year in the 25th minute. And the Rovers lead 1-0. The third goal of the year for Masood Habibullah. And a turnover by Captain Nathan Walters. Unfortunate for the visitors, but the Swan Guardians love it. Dead on my right. And the Pirates draw first blood here this afternoon at Swan Guard. Look at the smile on Masood Habibullah's face. He'd been pretty quiet through 26 here. But a flick on header by McMillan. Walters missed it. And Edwardson unselfish for Habibullah who tucks it into a yawning net and gives his squad the lead here on 25 minutes. Third of the year for Masood Habibullah, who came through the Whitecaps system. His brother Cameron, a member of the Whitecaps MLS squad as well, mostly plays with WFC2 on this very grass, but it's Masood who gets the spotlight here, converts a perfect pass from Eric Edwardson. And it's a first goal of the game for the TSS Rovers. And 
fair to say it wasn't necessarily coming. I think Altitude has really applied the pressure the last few minutes, but a wise play by Eric Edwardson to pick his head up and find Habibullah made a great run, and now the goal scorer on the ball here shoves off Fremont, but offside is the call on Habibullah. Made a very aggressive play here, and some uh, pleasantries exchanged between Habibullah and Fremont there, the two teammates of last year. But who else in that man there? Masood Habibullah to get his name on the score sheet this afternoon. Third of the year, was mentioned, first appearance since May the 20th against Yundi, where he scored two clinical goals to give the Rovers a 4 0 win on that day. This marks the Rovers' seventh game of the year as well. Halfway mark of the season. This is eighth for Altitude as Hildebrandt, top of the 18. We'll have a half volleyed strike, and the former Rover as well from 2017 skies that one. Goal kick here for Connor Adams. The left footed keeper plays it quickly to Nicholas Barrett. Spichenko for Zohar. Now Danilo Spichenko for Zohar. Watched by three altitude players in that blue kit, but Zohar. Smoothly to his left for Jones, who goes long for Edwardson there. That uh, trademark run by Edwardson and behind the altitude defense. Shavula in support, but it's a quick one-two pass back to Edwardson. Too heavy from Dillon as he puts his head in his hands there. Does Tyler Dillon. But another one of those over-the-top balls from Kyle Jones looking to hunt down Eric Edwardson, the PC winger. His altitude will come the other way here. Looking to even up the score. Marshall goes all the way back for Trevor Schneider. Mentioned off the top of the broadcast, Altitude coming into this game, basement of the League 1 BC standings. However, we've seen what wins can do for them. Their first win on Wednesday, they started well in this game. Last year, when they got going the second half of the year, they were nearly unstoppable at home and on the road. As the hail looks long for Bangambi, perfect ball to the outside back. Watched by Papakrikopoulos here. Now Matthew Marshall. For Aheo. Hildebrandt looking long. Beautiful move by Anastasia Aheo. Trying to take a strike from distance. Elects to go to Sairup. Sairup now to his left for Shavula. Watched by Edwardson. Dillon comes in. No nonsense defending from the right back. Tyler Dillon. Now throwing for Shavula. He's been busy on the left side. Is He'll find Sairup into the box for Fremont. Altitude trying to tie up the game. Hildebrandt looking long. And he was over the shoulder of Papakrikopoulos, but Escobar came in to help out defensively here, and he'll move it up this left side. Looking long for Habibullah. Kanate finds Marshall, and now Anastasia Hale for altitude. In the 30th minute, over is getting the scoring going. Five minutes ago, Masood Habibula clinically is third of the year after a giveaway the back by Captain Nathan Walters of Altitude Football Club. That one runs past Shavula and a thrown for Dylan, who wants to quick play quick to Edwardson. This time Walters got the better of Edwardson, not on the goal there, but Walters will just clip it away. Dylan for Edwardson. Brown Elaw has turned around but did well to face goal side or goal word rather and have his team in possession as Walters will play it back into the Rovers half. Smichenko recovering well and heads it for Adams. Here's Brett with Zohar in support. But covered heavily by Fremont and Hillebrandt. It's almost a 4-2-3-1 here for Fally Bass, the head coach of Altitude, who you heard from before the game. And talking to him in the week, just talking about this Difficult start of the year, saying it. Uh, you can't look too far ahead. You have to take it game by game. You have to, the players have to enjoy playing football every game, which is very important for their mentality and not to, to get ahead of themselves for the game, next game of the game after that, especially against these two massive matchups against TSS. As Dylan makes his way forward, away by Kanate, but right to the feet of Zohar. McMillan drops down for Dylan. Connor McMillan out to the wide area. Avoided the tackle. Bernardo Wheeler was clipped in by... McMillan had a header over by Habibullah, who was in some discomfort down in the pitch there, but another 
idea by McMillan at forcing the issue. And a great ball in to the head of Monsieur Habibullah here in the 32nd. And the goal score in this game, Habibullah just headed over. And a great ball in it from Captain Connor McMillan. Escobar came through Fremont and a foul there just in front of the Rovers bench. So you see Darren Rushen there, Rusher there rather on your screen. Telling some instructions to his team there. Along with Brennan Teeling and Tom Johnson, the assistant coaches. Altitude won't mind this. Keep some possession here. Try and create opportunities when they have the ball. Can't be chasing the game the whole entire 90 for in this one and trying to win the game. Possession is key when the conditions are difficult. Smachenko tidally done for Barrett. On the deck for Escobar, who's kind of drifted to a center mid roll here with Jones switching to left back. And I asked Aaron Rusher about how fluid his back line has been this season. He's had three different center back pairings, including Sergeant Poor and Dylan sliding into the center back. And he said they're just so fluid, they're so coachable, these players. And really, anybody can plug and play anywhere they want in the back line. He said it's a bit of messaging and quality of players as well. Difficult to manage. The starting 11 and playing your best guys like we saw in the Canadian Championship due to the age restrictions. Sagawa on the bench today for TSS. Along with Ivan Mejia, who I'm sure we'll see later. Ali Zohar will take a free kick here for TSS. A long ways out, but he will play it towards the back post. Smichenko header down for Perret. It's still there. Tyler Dillon robbed by Schroeder. A bicycle kick from Edwardson off the post. What an opportunity, acrobatics from Eric Edwardson. And the first shot wasn't bad either from Tyler Dillon, but Trevor Schneider, the keeper for altitude, already strong there in the orange kit with a beautiful save on Tyler Dillon, who was looking at his first goal as a rover there, but the altitude keeper denied him as a perfectly weighted ball from Zohar. And Svichenko headed down. Barrett let it go for Dillon and Edwardson here. Looking for his fourth of the year. Put it off the post to the left of Schneider. And thankfully for the North Van side. Avoided another goal for the home side here. Good luck for Eric Edwardson, who was the gold moot winner last year in League One BC. Was presented with a nice plaque from the Swan Guardians and Rovers coaching staff for his efforts. So here's Zohar. Gabe Escobar for Kyle Jones. Now UFE Cascade of Canada West. Nick Burrett for McMillan. Foul from behind by Syroop. Quickly played by Zohar McMillan. Felt that one a little bit more than I thought initially as he's down holding his left knee. There's the man they call C-Mac. Slowly to his feet there is McMillan, but getting some attention from Danilo Smichenko and we saw how much of a warrior McMillan is in that Pacific game. Had a clash of heads with Amir Didic in the first half and played the rest of the game with a bandaged head. Missed the next game against Harborside, but uh, he's not going to miss any game time if he has to, but seriously limping there is McMillan holding his ankle. Darren Rusher worryingly looking at his coaching staff here down to my right as Mejia was... Looking to get up, but here's the tackle again as Syru from behind and McMillan. You see that left ankle twist as the contact came in as Zohar tried to play it quickly, but referee said no. As McMillan gets to his feet, not happy with no card there, but that's two tough decisions against McMillan today. In the 36 minutes, uh, again ball in for Masir Habibullah, grabbed by Schneider. Again, the big striker getting on the end of a long ball forward as Sure, Valley Bass going to want to tighten it up here after 45 minutes, but uh, 10 to go until the half. Altitude trailing. Team that has scored the third most goals this year in League One BC. It's the defensive record that has been challenging for them. Second worst with coming into this game anyways, 15 goals against. Now 16 
that leads the league. So a negative five goal differential. But if you take away about five or six of those goals, you're in a good position. Meanwhile, on the flip of the coin, the Highlanders coming into this game and this weekend, for that matter, only scored six goals in six games. So they're winning games by 1-0 or 2-1, if that. And not conceding a lot. Three and six goals against for the Highlanders. And that's why they're top of the table right now. Two ahead of Unity and not some odd. And three ahead of the Rovers. Highlanders and Unity playing today in Langley. Here's McMillan bounced off his right foot. Good to see he's okay for now. But that, just as he played that ball, McMillan limping heavily in that uh, left leg. So here's Walters for altitude in his own half. Pressure by Habibula. Rovers with a high press here that has allowed them to get that first goal in the 25th there. And uh, almost again, but Walters, the big center back, dealt with that ball really well. Played with FC Fowley, captain last year and this year, Nathan Walters. Man of the people, Walters, whenever you see a social post from altitude, Walters usually signing autographs for young fans in the North Shore. So Hale will go back to collect here for Schneider. Here's Kanate, pressure by Zohar. Went off of Kanate for a throw and a good job to win the ball there to, was Zohar as Habibullah was maybe offside. Kanate comes in. Those two battle it out. And a free kick here. Habibullah judged to have fouled Kanate. That's been a physical matchup here. Walters, Kanate, and the Rovers striker, Habibula. Schneider trying to usher his team on there. As McMillan has dropped to the grass here, and I think that might be his day. We'll see. Rovers subs now coming up as we have a moment's water break here in the 39th. Mentioned kickoff temperatures about 24 degrees, but... Uh, no official water break in the women's game, and as it gets warmer, they do try and get some hydration in. So you see Edwardson and Papakopoulos in conversation. McMillan there, captain wincing a little bit as he holds that ankle, takes his uh, cleat off there. Gets worked on by the total therapy team on the grass. You wonder, like for like, maybe Ivan Mejia coming in here. He's more of a left winger. McMillan obviously an attacking midfielder who plays to the middle, but where was... Very fluid in how they play going forward. A number of players can play different positions. That's what it was like earlier in the season when there is a conflict between the Rovers game and a Provincial Cup final. There was about six or seven Rovers players that had to miss. So Darren Rusher elected to go with numerous different fringe guys. McVillan getting the ankle taped up there, but... By the looks of it, we'll see how long he's able to carry on here or allowed to carry on for that matter. Can I get a look at the Swan Guardians and the Altitude fans? Valley Bass with some instructions for his team as well. As backup keeper for Altitude today, Adrian Poor ushering the team on as there's a look at the Swan Guardians in some shade here. Taking in their own hydration. Good number of them on hand as always here at Swangard Stadium. And the Altitude fans with that huge flag in support. A drum as well from the North Shore. Always travel in numbers to the Altitude fans. The same with Swan Guardians. Tick Millen now getting the final tape up. Has his cleat back on, which is good news, but... We'll see how long he can carry on here. Five minutes to go until halftime. So free kick for Trevor Schneider here. McMillan is up on his feet by the looks of it. And uh, he'll have to wait at half here just in front of the Big Ten and halfway to be brought back onto the pitch. Smichenko let that one go. Might fall through a Bangambi behind the defense. We'll have a half volley that rolls to the left of Adams. 
And thankfully for TSS, that one went wide of the keeper. Just his second start of the year, Connor Adams. It's been all Justin Sandu for the others. Smachenko finds Barrett. Habibula for Jones. Little one two with the goal score here. Watched by Aheo, but Habibula strong, strong play. Back for Jones, top of the 18, lays it off McMillan. Little ball back for Jones, didn't work, and now it's back for Smichenko inside the Rovers' half. Now Nicholas Barrett. Habibula for Papakrikopoulos. A hail for Syrub off of the Rover's 24's leg. That's Nico Papake, a Rover of 2018. And then signed with the squad back for this year. Spent some time with Unity Football Club last year in Langley with Mike Sheeran and Simu. I've had a wealth of players switch from them to Natsumon and vice versa. It's Ben Gamby slipped in the far side. A quick throw in here for Tyler Dillon. Here's Nicholas Barrett. Tried to find Smichenko and said goes to McMillan. Looks to be A-OK -okay after that uh, brief break there. I'm sure adds some time onto the 45. Looks to be three minutes on the scoreboard. In addition to the 45, already played here. one nothing. Rovers lead right now. Goal on the 25th from Habibula. The difference for TSS. Escobar trying to play in Papakrikopoulos. Up in the air was Marshall, won that one. Now for Fremont, just over a set at half, there was Hildebrandt. All the way back for Nicholas Barrett. Connor Adams. Lifted ball for Escobar. Looks like Sirub won his squad a throw, throw rather. Yes, he did. Cute little uh, Nick play there by Sirub. Sirub to win himself a throw. Now leaves it for Matthew Marshall. Here's a hail. Marshall led back for Walters in his own half. Walters goes all the way back for Trevor Schneider. A hail. Kanate turns past Zoar. Now a hail back for Sako Kanate. Looking long for Benjamin Gambi to switch to the left here. Offside flag does go up though. Referee didn't see it. Now he puts his hand up and blows a whistle. But Ben Gamby didn't like what he saw on the right wing, goes to the left wing ahead of Shavula, and Sirub goes to the right. Spratly Bass changes tactics a little bit here as we approach the 45. Dylan back for Smichenko. Now Brett. Papakrikopoulos off the face there of Syrub and when himself a throw is mentioned three minutes to be added on here at to Swangard of the first half. Heavy Bula on the turn shove by Marshall plays a very aggressive style. Shockingly no cards yet in this Ironworkers Derby the first installment this year third overall. Here's Barrett. Cross for Smichenko, you see the communication and strength of those two at the back when the Rovers are in possession and out of it for that matter. They're very hard to break down. The 
Rovers given up just three goals all season in six games to this point. Zohar towards Edwardson and Ahayo collects. Here's Dylan at half for Smichenko. Escobar. Looking long for McMillan. Good idea. McMillan might be behind the defense. Grabbed by Schneider. Again, the Rovers trying to play in behind here of altitude, but Schneider has read that one. Not allowing Habibullah into much last 20 minutes since his goal. It's been more McMillan and Edwardson on the ball in the last 15 to 20. Canate back for Bernardo Elaz is playing pretty deep here for Fally Bass's team. Here's Marshall. Hildebrandt off the leg of Barrett. Escobar all the way back for Connor Adams. Now Danilo Smichenko. Nicholas Brett. Smichenko with Edwardson ahead of him will not like what he see forward and go back for Adams as TSS just hold the ball here. And they won't mind going into the break with a 1-0 score, but Altitude looking to turn the tide here. As they apply pressure up high, Elaz, Hildebrand, and Fremont furthest forward here for the North Van base team is a ball from Adams forced into touch here and that's exactly what Altitude were trying to do and now they win the ball they'll have the throw in for Fremont Escobar pushed it out of play in a late corner here for Altitude but they will not get an opportunity to take it and Altitude bench not happy with that one Ben Chabert, Davide De La Valle and Fally Bass in some conversation here with the fourth official they wanted to take it the corner kick is Della Valle and Brendan Teeling in a conversation here. And uh, a good old derby here today as evidence there. The conversation between the coaching staff and uh, some players as well. A physical affair as you see Della Valle there in conversation with Francisco Scaglian who was a busy man in the first half was the fourth official. Not often you can say that about a official who's not in the field of play but He's in conversation here. And a 1-0 Rovers lead after 45. Rovers getting the goal on 25 minutes. Through the suit, Happy Bulla is there is Joey Ratcliffe as well there, and his referee team there. And a busy first half for the officials here. But uh, a scoreless game midway through the first half until the Happy Villa goal, and you felt like Altitude might be able to take advantage, and that's kind of their style is kind of hold the ball, get some possession, and they have some options off the bench when we get there to that point in the second half, but obviously the third game of the week, never easy to do. Put a 1-0 lead at uh, halftime here for the Rovers in their second-to-last home game of the season. As we will step aside and bring in the member of our crew and the sideline reporter, Jake McGrailey, standing by with Masuda Habibula. I'm here with the lone goal scorer of the first half, Masuda Habibula. And this is now three appearances for the team in a row for you with either a goal or an assist. What has really allowed you to find your rhythm here offensively this season? Uh, I think uh, my team's helped me a lot. Uh, it was pushing me in the training. Plus just mindset, you know, being positive, just uh, being strong throughout it all. So that's pretty much what's helped me the last few weeks. So I'm really uh, been happy. And you guys, up one nothing now at home. You've been a very strong defensive team this season. So do you think in the second half there might be more of a focus on the defensive side? Or keep pushing forward trying to score some more goals? Uh, I think uh,
That was Masood Habibullah joined with Jake McGrail. Thanks for that, Jake. And Masood, one nothing. Rovers lead at halftime. Masood Habibullah, the 25th minute of the year. The difference so far. You're watching League One BC feature match on YouTube and tell us more to come here from Burnaby after the break. BC was built to provide opportunity for everyone involved with the game in our province. The Hall Group proudly supports its own workforce while offering training and opportunity for new recruits to its multiple divisions. A partnership that provides people with the tools they need, both on the field of play and in the field. Hall, together we rise as one. Like, am I doing enough? Am I gonna achieve anything? Like, I didn't see anybody like me. So it was obviously really tough. It's just like, am I there for nothing? Am I doing this all for nothing? Like, there's nobody, I have nobody to like, look up to. And me, after I finished a game, I just look into the stands and uh, sometimes I'd have family, sometimes I wouldn't. And then it'd be like, kind of like a little, you sit in the change room, you give yourself like a little, little self vibe. Programs haven't been accessible, nor have they been created that are culturally safe. Uh, for Indigenous children and youth. So we wanted to close that gap. Notsamat FC is owned by Hope and Health and aims to get young Indigenous athletes into a higher level of sport. Hope and Health is a sport for social impact organization that works specifically with Indigenous children and youth and their communities. We really have been working on creating the pathway from those young, talented athletes that aspire to go pro or play to an elite level as high as they can go. It's about creating program that's accessible within Indigenous communities. Sometimes all you just need is that one or even that one person that believes in you. Um, and I'm hoping this platform of Natsuma and even me just being here will show other Indigenous youth and other players that you can do it. You just dedication, hard work, and lots of just faith and just reaching out to like putting yourself out, just putting yourself out there and not being afraid of like the racial barriers or like people doubting you that you can't do it. It created an identity for us with varsity. It was about UBC athletes preparing for the fall season for Canada West. And when Natsuma came in, there was a bigger picture, a bigger focus, and uh, we were living it. We're living it every day with our identity, with uh, trying to increase the Indigenous pathway and, and open up a, a, a big door for, for players to come through. You know, it's not just the, the, the players too. Like I've got uh, an assistant coach, 
Um, there's some game op stuff, so it's it's uh, it does go beyond the players. Oh, yes. what a finish! All right. For not smart FC players, it's important for them to give back and mentor the next generation. I think it's a win-win for everyone, uh, for our, our UBC athletes to get into uh, communities that may not even be thinking about university and they get to see student athletes firsthand. I think that's, that's a positive to show that there's, there's a pathway not only for sport but, but into post-secondary as well. When they think of soccer, they don't think of us and obviously that's very hard because growing up, that was my FIFA, going to tournaments, watching it, it was my FIFA, like, that was my World Cups, watching them play, it was like other players I couldn't see in TV. As an Indigenous youth, like, we're raised, we're representing our community, not just ourselves, like, it takes, a, like, a village to raise a child, like, I, for me as an example, I had uncles, aunties, coaches, a plethora of people that, like, help support me, and it really shows, like, growth and development. Um, and you're just there to represent your people to the best of your abilities and just make whoever proud and yourself proud, more importantly, and then just walk in a good way. Natsumat FC is in their first season of competition with 11 Indigenous athletes across the men's and women's teams, as well as several Indigenous coaches and members of the backroom staff. Like, that's it. This is a big moment just to, like, prove Indigenous players have capabilities and opportunities to show talent because there's a lot that fall through the cracks that just don't get that opportunity. I already know what this is going to bring and I'm so excited. Like, I, can't, I don't even have, I can't even express the emotions. League One BC is a critical new level of play that supports soccer's infrastructure in the province. The Hall Group was built on infrastructure projects in British Columbia. This premier partnership between two built-in BC groups promotes the highest standards for people and their growth, while building communities in our province, both on the field and in the field. Hall, together we rise as one. You know, Canada's always had participation, participation on the women's side, participation on the men's side, but at some point you have to turn that into a pathway. The amount of times I get emails or phone calls from young soccer players asking, how do I make it? How do I do this? There's so many different pathways that players can take. 90% of those pathways are to leave our country, and that's what we have to change. Canada soccer is a very interesting setup when you think of top soccer countries, you're not usually thinking of Canada. Everybody looked at it and said, we need a league.
Welcome back to Swan Guard Stadium for the second half here of the League One BC feature match between Altitude Football Club and the TSS Rovers. Currently a 1-0 lead for the hosts here today. A 25th-minute goal from Mr. Masuda. Happy Bull of the Difference. You heard from him at halftime with Jake McGrail. Second half underway. Rovers in the all-black moving left to right. Altitude in the sky blue kits from right to left with the white shoulders. Free kick for the Rovers just inside the altitude half here. Kyle Jones to take the man who takes most of them for TSS. Zohar to his right waiting for that one there. And he'll get the ball back to Kyle Jones. Brett now back for Danilo Smichenko. Now Adams trying to find Svichenko as to swipe that one away, and it will be an early altitude corner here in the first 50 seconds of the second half as Sairub, Sairub has got that sweet left foot, will come over to take here. As the side from North Van tried to get back in this game. Not committing too many numbers forward here, our altitude obviously ready for a counterattack for TSS if it comes that way. But Sairub with the delivery here in that left foot. Ball in towards the middle. It's up in the air away by Dylan Walters was there. The two former uh, partners of defense last year. For altitude is Ajeo down the line for Fremont. Rovers made a sub at half time, by the way, as Grant Verhoeven, the number 12, came in for Connor McMillan, the captain, the number 7. So Verhoeven onto the pitch for this second half here as he's a TSS player through and through. Smichenko for Dylan. Here's Grant Verhoeven back for Danilo Smichenko. Turns on Hildebrandt. Now Adams. Sprays it forward for Papakriklopas. Knocked down by Rafael George. Came on as a sub as well for Altitude. The long ball played Edwards. It might be behind the defense wearing the captain's arm and good sliding tackle by Marshall. And Shavul will save a corner here for TSS as he dances around the corner flag. This one off Edwardson for a deep throw in for altitude here. And it looks like it was Rafael George coming in for Brandon Bangambi. Rotation that I talked about with Fally Bass the interview earlier this week. And he said that it's important to rotate. And they have done here as Bangambi off, George on. The number 11 is brother Guillermo. Kierme rather on the bench. Smichenko goes all the way back for Connor Adams, the left-footed keeper. Wasn't super busy in the first half, but was uh, honest when his name was called upon. Kept the North Van base squad off the score sheet. Cheville will take a throw on this left side here for Matthew Marshall. Is shifted to a left center back role here. Avoids a harsh tackle from Masood Habibullah. Trevor Schneider lofts it forward for Shavula. Up there was Dylan. Now it's it back into the altitude half. Marshall there ushering it into play. And out after all that for a throw in here for TSS. Story Radcliffe will blow his whistle and pick up the ball here. Might actually be a altitude free throw. Yes, it is. It's a throw rather for a Marshall there. It's didn't take it the time the referee likes, so he'll have to retake. Well, Matthew Marshall. Returning from last year, one of 15 for altitude. Rovers keeping 12 themselves, despite a number of offers to take the game to the next level for those guys professionally. But obviously the goal is to move a player along, and it's always been if we see you the next week for TSS, then... I want you to be uh, moving forward and go to the next level. Shavula now intercepted temporarily by Zohar. Shavula carried on his run and got fouled by Zohar. And a free kick here. Still no cards today. And we'll wait for the first one, but I feel like 
If there's going to be one, there's going to be many. Free kick for Sarub here with his left foot. See how long he's on the pitch here for Valley Bass. Still recovering from an injury from earlier in the season. Missed a few games for the visitors. Down by Zohar for Habibula. Now there's Marshall for altitude. All the way back for Trevor Schneider. Bernardo Elos. Losing that one was Kanate Habibula trying to climb through Walters. And a free kick in a very good position here for TSS. And Walters, a lucky man there as Habibula was in through. And a free kick for TSS in about 30 yards here. Rovers bench wanting a card. They won't get one. As you see, the turn of pace there by Habibula, fouled by Walters. And Habibula puts his arm up right away, trying to initiate a referee's booking. Free kick for TSS, as mentioned, Eric Everson shapes one up here. Mentioned about to 25 or 30 from goal. Four man wall for altitude. Papakriakopoulos and Zohar standing over it. Seen Everton score from here before. Seen Jones take these, but Rovers looking to double the score here in the 52nd. Everton, the main man, the leading goal scorer this year, League One BC, on that right foot. Altitude players are primed. I wonder if Altitude can win the ball here, play it forward for Hellebrand. He's only guarded by two TSS players, but Everton will step up on that right foot. Eric Edwardson into the wall. He'll try another volley. Eric Edwardson, a beauty. Oh, my goodness. Eric Edwardson blasts into the top corner. And the Rovers take a 2-0 lead in the 53rd minute as he dives into the Swan Guardians. And look at the celebration. Goal of the year candidate for Eric Edwardson, his fourth of the year. Staples is name on the score sheet with an absolute peach. And it's 2-0 for the Burnaby Base Rovers here today. A cracker from Double E. And you knew when it shaped up off the free kick, he was going to step up, and he just uncorks one past Schneider. Volley into the top corner. And look at the knee slide celebration. Trademark Edwardson blasted off the wall and then blasted to the back of the net. And that was a beauty. Nothing else you can say about that one from Eric Edwards in it. As the Swan Guardian celebrating, that was a highlight real goal from Eric Edwards. And might be one of the best we've seen in the feature matches this year, but wow. Edwards in piggybacking Habibullah's goal in the first half. This one, though, seven minutes after halftime. And it's a 2 nothing Rovers lead. In the 52nd. Could not have hit those any better. I've seen Eric Edwardson as a YouTube channel. You watch him practice those free kicks and those volleys, and it's very difficult to try and stop as a keeper, especially first time like that. You don't know where it's going. Could go 30 yards over the net or through the net, and that time it went the right way for Eric Edwardson as Papa Kriakopoulos clips, clips it forward rather for Jones. Now Mejia and Habibula offside here. Hey, also a sub at halftime for TSS. Looks like you replaced Gabe Escobar. So here's Fremont back for Schneider. Papakri Coppolis chests it forward for Mejia. On the turn here, Ivan Mejia. Look at the brilliant Colombian go. Finds Habibula back for Mejia. I'm Mejia from distance. Pushed aside by Schneider as the Rovers attack comes to life out of nowhere. Edwardson scores and Mejia with a flash of brilliance to the midfield. And the Rovers returnee from last year. Team of the week of League One BC three times. Just about made it 3-0 for his squad. What a look there for Mejia. Scored a beauty against Valor in the Canadian Championship back a few weeks ago here at Swangard in that wonderful night. 
Silhar whips it in back post. Smichenko up for it and just wide to the left of Schneider there. And then Mejia getting a couple as well against Unity. Marshall on the ball for altitude for Hildebrandt. The North fan side eating something here to get back in this game. Smichenko shoves through Syrub. And first warning there from Joey Radcliffe. As Altitude prepping to make a triple sub here by the looks of it. Marshall back for Walters. Trevor Schneider for Sacco Konate. Up ahead there for Rafael George. Flicked on by Fremont. And George will just let it run there initially. Had to check his run because it looked like the ball might stay in play. It did, but then rolled out. As Mahan, the ball draped all over him was a hail. Papakriakopoulos now forward for Heavy Bullet trying to play through the back line. Kanate heads it down. Fremont got it there to Elos. And now Zohar for Jones. Fouled heavily there by Elos. And I mentioned it earlier about uh, tenacious midfield of Fremont and Elos. Elos is one yellow card away from four, which would mean a suspension for one game for accumulation. Him and David Rodriguez, who are on the bench and about to come in here for altitude. Looks like a quadruple sub, actually. Don't often see that. As you see again here, Jones cut the ball back and a swipe at the leg from Elos. Zohar will deliver this one towards the back sticks. Machenko is there. Barrett was as well. Drops down for Habibula. Watch closely by Marshall and Hale. Here's Dylan as Habibula and Marshall get into it there. Dylan fouled by Hale. And a free kick for TSS. Just to the right of their coaching staff who look on. But have to be pleased here to the Rovers staff who have won three straight home games, scoring 11, and looking to continue that here this afternoon. Ahead by two, but certainly not out of the woods. Which sets our backdrop today. Beautiful Central Park in Burnaby, the site for the 5th League 1 BC feature match of the season here on YouTube and TELUS. League One BC featured match on TELUS Optic TV is presented by the Hall Group of Companies. Together we support League One BC's three pillars of community, opportunity, and standards. Verhoeven trying to play it back to Jones. And now Dylan is Rovers key possession but lose it in a very difficult position. Is now they'll attack while altitude at Syrup on this left flank. Now finding Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt through the legs of Zohar. Here's Bernardo Rila. Shapes were not blocked by Smichenko. Thought he might pull an Eric Everts in there with that strike. Bernardo Elas has George fouled by Barrett and a free kick here for Altitude as the game starts to shift here back to Altitude's way. As mentioned, that quadruple sub coming up here for Altitude. Fally Bass not liking what he's seeing about a number of his players on the pitch as he changes things up. Looks like Caleb Valance and Adrian Poor, the number 19 and 33, making their season debuts for Altitude. They said that earlier in the broadcast didn't make the 18 in any of the prior seven games for Altitude, but on the bench today. And that's the joy of being able to sign players midway through this season or towards the end of the year. Looks like Guillermo George as well about to check in. They'll have to be after this free kick, though. Syrub towards the middle, away by Zohar. Out towards half as Ahale will try and Hustle back to it. Jones in close proximity will force the ball to go back to Schneider here in the 59th. Here's Wizazo Shavula. Free loss. Trevor Schneider now for Kanate. Tinely done. Sarub watched by Zohar on the turn. Happy Bull Edwardson flicks it back up in the air, but right to the Orange-clad Schneider who throws it quite a ways to Shavula just inside this touch line. Trying to spur his team on. Shavula back for Elos. Tidy ball for Syrub. Run through from Raphael George. Ball came to him, but it'll roll out on the far side. And that will prompt the substitution here for Altitude. And we'll see who comes off here. But you feel like it might be Syrub. But... Looks like his race is run. Takes off the armband on the far side. Fremont 
Elaz and Hildebrand all making way here. So Valley Bass changing things up here in a 2 nothing deficit at the moment. Prepping as well, I'm sure, one eye maybe on next Sunday's rematch at Kinsman Field in North Van as Valence Poor, Guillaume George onto the pitch for Altitude and David Rodriguez. Throwing here for Papakriakopoulos for Zohar. Mejia. Altitude going to try to have to keep Mejia off the ball here as Rafael George in a little tussle with Mejia. Aheo comes away with it now for Matthew Marshall. He likes to go back to Schneider. Marshall, a seven games played, five starts in the 2021 season with McGill. University out in the OUA. Returning now the number six, Matthew Marshall. Physical play, him and Happy Bull have had some battle saber men at the wars, so to speak. So here's Masood Happy Bull inside the altitude half for Ali Zohar. Dylan swings it back for Smichenko here. Guillermo George applying the pressure for this forward here for altitude. And pushing the envelope was Barrett for Mejia. Drops down in front of Grant for Hooven. Mejia watches Guillermo George go all the way back there to Schneider. Happy Bulla again just forcing the altitude keeper back into his own 18. Here's Rodriguez. Lost it to Jones. Edwardson on the forced turnover inside the altitude half for Grant Verhoeven. Verhoeven outside for Mejia. Watched by Rafael George, two tricky wingers battling it out. Mejia shoved, and that might be a penalty to TSS just inside the box. Mejia grabs the ball, will step up here for TSS. It is a penalty, as Jones might take it instead of Mejia, actually. But either way, the Rovers gifted a chance here to make it three on the day here in the 63rd minute. As Mejia was running, and then George pushed him there. And it is a foul, and it is inside the 18. And Kyle Jones will be the man to step up. He scored in the penalty from the penalty spot last year in the finals of League One BC, as mentioned against, at the time, Varsity FC. But now a gift here to give the Rovers a 3-0 lead on the day in the 63rd minute. Kyle Jones as well looking for his first of the year. The tricky midfielder against Trevor Schneider on the left foot. Swan Guardians prep, so is Kyle Jones. Stopped by Schneider and a big save here in the 63rd. Keeps the Rovers to two, the deficit to two, and his side still in this match. Big moment for Trevor Schneider there as the altitude scratches there on the screen. Loving it including their backup keeper today, or backup to the backup, Luca Ortu. You love that one from Trevor Schneider, who evidenced their team of the week three times, and a beautiful save pushes it to his left and pumps up the team at the same time. That is clinical goalkeeping there at a crucial time for altitude. And then another free kick here as the visitors concede one in a tough area. Almost similar spot to the opposite side where the Penalty kick was just given there. This time, Papakriakopoulos and Zohar standing over it. Papakriakopoulos on that left foot. Two-man wall for altitude. Can it be three in the day after that missed penalty? Papakriakopoulos whips it in front post and daggered away by Eheo. But still on here for TSS. As Jones slowly saunters over here to the near corner to take the set piece in the 65th. Kyle Jones plays it short for Mejia. Back for Jones. Back for Mejia. Onside. Flag stays down. Mejia to the end line. Strikes it off the legs of Rodriguez. And another corner coming up here. Kyle Jones over to take once again. 
Cheryl will hear about it from Ivan Mejia after the uh, missed penalty as Mejia wanted to take it. Wasn't happy when Jones grabbed the ball, but usually experience over skill in that situation. As Jones will whip it in back stick up there. Was Edwardson too far? Thought it might have hit an altitude player. It did not. And a goal kick for Schneider as again he tries to force his team forward with a quick goal kick, but it has to slow it down as the Rovers are inside the box. And that's Habibula. Definitely putting his name into the hat for Gatorade Performer of the Day is Masoud Habibula. Schneider will play it long towards the center circle. Up there was Adrian Poor, the substitute. Edwardson knocks it back for Dylan. Gets rid of it there for Marshall. And now Rodriguez slammed off the legs of Rodriguez there by Edwardson, who's also on a yellow card accumulation warning. David Rodriguez, the number 20. Played U23 soccer in Lima, Peru, and played for Langara for two seasons, the Falcons. One of a couple of Langara players on this altitude team is Javi Bula, pulled down by Marshall there. And a foul just inside the, in front rather, of the altitude bench. A much more subdued coaching staff after a halftime discussion between the Two assistant coaches from either side as that ball plays through for Mejia. In came Walters. Now Rodriguez for Shavula. Running at this left side is with Shavula. Finds poor. That one struck Dylan and Zohar by committee. A throw in here for Wizazo Shavula of altitude. For Rodriguez. And now Shavula. For Nathan Walters. Sacco Kanate watched by Mejia. Pushed away by Jones right into the altitude half here as the North Van side push the Rovers deeper and deeper into their half here. And we'll have to do so in the next 27 minutes if they want to get back into this game as a ball struck Marshall and a throw in for Edwardson. He'll let it go for Tyler Dillon who makes his way up the touchline here to take. Wisely taking his time for this throw in here. Jones comes short to support his teammate. Dylan goes all the way back for Smichenko. Watched by Guillermo George. Dylan running down this right side. Keeps it along for Everton to let it go. Back for Marshall. And Marshall back for Shunners. Marshall pushed him behind by Dylan there. Interestingly enough, Marshall, Dylan, and Happy Pula, all teammates last year, but those have been the Two battles I've watched all day. A physical marshal against Dylan and Habby Villa, but clearly no love between those two after being teammates last year with Altitude in the North Shore. So this one played long by Schneider into the Rovers half. Zohar flicks it on again then by Rodriguez. Big Caleb Valance flicks it on for Guillermo George and away by Grant Verhoeven. Up there is Edwardson, knocks it down for Jones. Habby Villa for Kyle Jones. Mahe in space to the left side. Kanate did really well to read that ball that was earmarked for Mejia. Schneider now releases the pressure for Anastasia Hale. Rodriguez back for Matthew Marshall up the touchline for Wazazo Shavula. And that one rolled past the altitude left back there. And a throw in for Eric Edwardson. Now let it go for Dylan. Rover sub prepped here. And it looks like Nico Papakopoulos making way. Here in the 69th minute. And in comes Fugo Segawa, the number 25. He's here in Russia meets Papakopoulos with a handshake of the bench and a good day at the office for Nico Papakopoulos. The left back quiet as the play didn't come through. His side a whole lot came down this near channel. In the second half, first half, he was a little bit more busy, but with the Rovers in possession, they've kept the ball pinned inside the altitude half. Walters away. Edwardson trying to play it for Habibula. Collected by David Rodriguez. Marshall now. Dylan trying to knock it down off the shoulder of Poor. Deemed to have hit it with his hand, though. And now a free kick for TSS. Zohar plays in Jones. 
Dillon all the way back for Danilo Smichenko. Watched by Guillermo George, and now Smichenko again and just avoids the on-rushing striker. The brother to Rafael, the number 11 on the pitch for altitude. Played in the Bundesliga Div 2 with SV Wacker U19. Did Guillermo George, is that one flicked down by Dylan Wright to the feet of David Rodriguez. Rodriguez for Shavula. Down the line for Rodriguez. Altitude fans ushering their team on here. Adrian Poor, nice creative move. Poor trying to get by Dylan, who read that play well. And finds Zohar. Now Happy Bula hold up play. Fuko Sagawa. Four by George. Raphael and uh, Guillaume there. And a throw in for Raphael George. On that touch line. 71st minute, 19 to go here on a sunny Sunday from Burnaby. Altitude FC trail the Rovers by two. And would have been three if not for a acrobatic PK save by Trevor Schneider eight minutes ago. It's Jones, nice collection of the ball for Dylan. Dylan for Zohar. Steers it back for Jones in a nice scoop play past the on-rushing Guillermo George. So hard ahead for Edwardson. Now Barrett. Zagao in space to his left. Barrett will channel it forward for Mejia. Overlapping run from Zagawa. There's Habibula. Picked up by Walters. Watched by Mejia. Those two collide. Mejia won the ball fairly, said the referee. Mejia with Verhoeven to his left. Keeps it going, trying to find Verhoeven. The ball lacking from the speedy winger. And that'll set the visitors off to the races. Kanate trying to play it through for Poor, the tricky winger. And his first appearance this season, the 18, and first appearance on the field for that matter, created some opportunities. Fugo Sagawa now back for Barrett. Smichenko for Connor Adams, who... So hadn't had a, a busy day at the office, which isn't a bad thing. Justin Sandu, his uh, backup today. But first appearance since April 29th for Adams. Now held this clean sheet in each of his two games. This one might find Edwardson and away by Schneider. As Marshall was calling for a foul, didn't get it. Obviously have to play to the whistle. That's what Edwardson did. As Schneider... Uh, Participant in the U15-18 Canadian men's national team and played at Texas Rio Grande Valley in the College of the United States. Flicked on by Poor. There's Dylan on the half turn and Zohar will steer it back for Danilo Smichenko. Now Nicholas Barrett. Looking long for Edwardson. Back to Schneider who will grab it there. That one bounced again off the grass but Schneider was able to Corral it. And plays uh, Matthew Marshall into the play here. Rodriguez back for Matthew Marshall. Ahead for Shavula. Watched by Zohar as in comes Adrian Poor for David Rodriguez. Mejia out wide for Rafael George. To his brother Guillermo, but well defended by Nicholas Barrett. And a free kick goes the way of TSS. There's Fugo Segal on the ball, who's key in that to Canadian Championship games against Pacific and Valor. Key this season. Some of the team for last year, but did not play a game and would have added to a significant defensive corpse last year for, at the time, head coach Will Cromack. But a sliding tackle from Dillon. And a free kick here. And that'll be the first card of the game. It took us 75 minutes, shockingly. As a physical affair. As... Come to the forefront here. A yellow card for Tyler Dillon. We'll have to play the last 15 on a card. Is flying in there with Shavula and Dillon. And Dillon won the ball. Pushed out of play though and did get more of Shavula than the ball for that matter. But Dillon walks away with a yellow from that incident. And a free kick here for Altitude in front of Valley Bass, who's giving some instructions there as Joey Radcliffe tucks the card away and 
Gets this going again. Here is Rodriguez. A high delivery to the back post. Canate was up there. Might find Walters. Jones will half clear as George finds Shavula. Important for him to be in the ball here with Shavula. As he steers his altitude team forward a lot on this left side. Rodriguez plays in Shavula. Tidy play for poor. Now Rodriguez keeps the play going. Play allowed to go on is dangerous ball across. Save well. And still there. Kanate skies his shot. Altitude fans can't believe it, but a golden ticket for Altitude to get back in this game. And Sacco Kanate skies his shot from five yards out. What a great initial save as well for Connor Adams, and that's why you want to stay sharp in these types of games. Those are the moments that allow you to be a good goalkeeper and keep your clean sheet, and Adams did well there. But again, what a ball for by the substitute Rodriguez as he played it back across, and Kanate skies his shot. Here's Dylan now. Watched by Shavula. Edwardson hauled to the ground by Aheo. And a free kick here for TSS halfway into the altitude area here in the 76th. Tyler Dillon now finds Zohar. Habibula one touch back for Zohar and a one too many there as Edwardson was the intended recipient of that ball, but stepping in well was Matthew Marshall. Now Giram George off to the races here for altitude. Gets by Smichenko. Brett comes in and wins the ball back, but George will not give up on the play. Brett plays it long. Rodriguez nods it down. There's Habibula and Fort. Back for Zohar, who's going to try and put the ball across for Mejia. But his half volley delivery did not go to plan. Now Jones might try to play Mejia into the play. Now he will. Mejia out wide attacking here. Looking for more in this game is that Mejia. Just a bit too far ahead of him there, but will be a goal kick for Trevor Schneider as KG adds an E about to check in for TSS, the big four, number two. I wonder if it might be for Javi Villa. Shavula escapes past Ali Zohar. Now finds Aheo. And how about Wes Mejia? Aheo, though, with a firm tackle. Now Walters finds Konate. Konate for George came through for Valence. He might be onside. Caleb Valence gets by Adams. Keeps it in play. Valence still a low ball across. Nobody there. It was in behind Adrian Poor, but a nice little combination there between the altitude subs. As you see the flare the visitors have up top here as a foul by Rodriguez on Dylan. May not score a lot of goals in this game or for the season 10 and 7 coming in for altitude but they have looked very dangerous here offensively. Spachenko will get rid of the free kick here. Might give it to Adams. Yes he will. As you see there the foul by Rodriguez on Dillon came through the back of the Rovers defender. Adams will slowly deliver the ball into play here. As Habibullah leaves for Adzani, a good day at uh, in the game rather for uh, Habibullah, a goal in the 25th, the difference. A clinical finish from Habibullah off a great layoff from Edwardson. He's got to two points in the day, one goal, one assist. Rodriguez tries to switch the play. Sagawa misjudged it. Watched by Rafael George. Sagawa pulled George back in a very good position for a free kick here for altitude. Referee has a yellow here for Sagawa's. The left back kicked the ball away. You see again here a little tug of the jersey of George, and then Sagawa kept running and Thump the ball clear. It seems like Rafael George got the worst of that one. A returnee from last year, a tricky winger. Played in Germany for nine years, including time in the fifth, fourth and fifth tier of German soccer. Rafael George spent time then with Langara and FC Fally. Here's a free kick opportunity for a hail. Good ball in, flicked on by Rafael George by five. Rodriguez, second time, Rafael George blocked in front by Barrett. And another good position for Altitude. They're knocking at the door here in the 79th minute. Still time to get one back. Maybe even tie the game here. Rover is certainly not out of the clear yet. Corner kick for Guillermo George on his left foot. He's been a good since coming on. Whips it into the middle. Away by Adams. Thought he might have gotten clipped. And ball comes back for Marshall. 
Good turn from Poor. Away by Dylan. And to touch, just in front of the touch line, rather, was Rodriguez, who was fouled from behind by Keji Adani, a substitute most recently came in for Habibula. Plays at New Brunswick University Reds. First start last weekend. Through nine games played in his time there. 28 starts, 12 goals, five assists. That ball towards the back post. And away by Sigala. Grant Verhoeven quickly forward, and the Rovers have a number numerical advantage here as Mejia overlapping run from Verhoeven. Mejia will have to just push it back in his own half for Zohar. Now Ivan Mejia looking long for Grant Verhoeven. Over the top, great ball there from Mejia for Verhoeven. Adds a knee in the middle, waiting for the ball. Comes back to Kyle Jones. Left footed ball in for Adani. Might come to Edward, Edward Edwardson, rather. What a save by Trevor Schneider in the 81st. The flag does go up on Edwardson, but another chance for TSS to triple their lead was denied by the altitude keeper. All for naught, though, as it was offside. But again, Trevor Schneider putting his name in the Team of the Week conversation and even maybe the Gatorade performer of the day as Adrian Poor gets a long ball. Well read by Dylan as Poor goes down in the 18 there. Referee didn't give it much of a look, if at any. Smichenko into the altitude half for Marshall, but Adani tries to win the ball there with a nice foot play, but altitude collects. Walters lost it to Zohar. Edwardson back for Adams, a dangerous ball there. We saw that go the wrong way, the Rovers women's squad last week against Rivers that gifted the Kamloops side back into that game. Coming off the shoulder of Poor and a foul there on Dylan. Has to be careful. He's the only guy on the pitch with a yellow today. Eight minutes to go, tell full time and a free kick for altitude here. Rodriguez will shape over. Right footed ball for David Rodriguez. Rodriguez hit poor with the attempts. Rafael George now back for Rodriguez. Watched by Zohar. Now a hail for altitude on the ball. Watched by Zohar. Back for Rodriguez. Throw now for the altitude sub. One of four at uh, the one stands at play for that matter. It was David Rodriguez with poor Valence and Guillaume George. Poor didn't like the call on the free throw and rather there for TSS. It will be Dylan. For Kyle Jones. Segal overlapping run. Rafael George had to make that play and he did. Here's Kanate. For Rafael George on the outside. A technical ability to get to the inside of Kyle Jones. Cuts it back across goal and Valence was there but not in that right position as he collects it now. Valence, beautiful turn of pace. Back across goal for Poor. Flicked away. Shavula from distance. Half clear by Grant Verhoeven. Like Masoud Habibula, the soccer bloodlines run deep in his family. His brother Noah plays at York in the Canadian Premier League. As Sagawa was fouled from behind there by Kanate, who pushed him to the ground here in the 84th. Slow to his feet is Shavula there after a collision with Ali Zohar and Samela Savan will warm up here for Altitude, the big midfielder. Free kick here for Connor Adams, just to the left of his six yard box after that foul. Free kick for Adams into the Altitude half. Up there was Adani. Drops down Adani again, trying to run through Marshall. And it might find Edwardson in to help out, though, was Rodriguez. who's ran a lot of kilometers here after coming onto the pitch earlier on. Here's David Rodriguez. Back for Schneider. He dealt it wrong, and it's Kyle Jones bundling it home. A miscue of the back line, and the Rovers gifted with their third of the day. Kyle Jones missed the penalty. Doesn't miss this time from in close. 3-0 to the Rovers in the 85th. Kyle Jones, first of the year, pounces on a mistake and a miscue as Rodriguez put a foot wrong for the first time since the sub. 
came on and Schneider did as well. Made the mistake and Jones wasn't going to miss from there. His first of this season and makes up for the missed penalty is him and Mejia. A little uh, smile after that one. And the Swan Guardians love it here. They've now put up 14 goals in the last four home games and conceded just once. And they lead 3-0. This afternoon, as Kyle Jones converts. You didn't think it would be something like that with a good this Rovers team, the 3-0 lead. You thought maybe a penalty. That didn't happen. And then a another chance later on. Here is Walters off of Edwardson. Played forward by Schneider. Sigawa trying to nudge it ahead for Smichenko. Here's Sigawa on the throw in for TSS. Trying to find Ivan Mejia. Watched close to by Anastasia Heo. And a foul there. That will push the play back. Sigawa worn there by Joey Radcliffe. Radcliffe earned his keep today with the amount of whistles and maybe the lack of cards for that matter, but he's been a busy man in the middle. Mind of these two teams meet as well next Sunday at Kinsman Field and make sure to get out to the North Shore to support these two teams. And if you watch the women's game, I won't spoil the scoreline for you, but it was a wonderful game end-to-end. -end. These two teams do battle as well as mentioned next Sunday, a week off. As Samela Savan comes in late for Shavulo, never seemed right after that foul received from Kyle Jones. Rover's about to make a double sub as well. Thrown for Sagawa. Adani lost to Giram George. Watched by Adani here in the 88th. Thorn for Fugo Sagawa of the Rovers. As TSS just looked to close it out here. Looks like maybe a foul throw on Sagawa, or they let them make the subs. Now they will. As Benjamin Halton will come in and make his first appearance of the season for TSS, the young defender. Fusion FC was uh, in the 18 for the first time last week as Kyle Jones' day is done. And so is Eric Edwardson, the two point man today. One goal, one assist. And what a goal it was for the second of the day for TSS. The two vets returning from last year make way. Rovers continue their march here up the standings and with the goals still uh, coming to this day eight shy of unity for most goals four in the league with 19, but they're slowly creeping up and time for lowest goals against the league as well with Highlanders. So. Rovers right where they want to be. Maybe a little bit higher in the standings. Fourth coming into today. Could go first or second with a win or Highlanders loss. Highlanders Unity, Unity rather duking it out in Langley today. Highlanders playing their second of a back-to-back -back as well. They played yesterday in Kamloops against Rivers. Throwing for Tyler Dillon who's had a great day at the office against his former team nonetheless. Really found his niche on the right back position. Been a battle for spots. Sagawa can play right back. So can Escobar. Dylan, as Ben Holton slams that ball out of play. The substitute trying to stake his name in the 11 and maybe in the 18 more and more, the young defender. Guillermo George on the overlapping run from his brother Rafael will find it. Rafael plays it in for Kanate. Struck uh, Smichenko is now wearing the captain's armband. The Midfielder, third time for the armband to change players today. From McMillan, who subbed off in half to Edwardson, and now Smichenko. The leaders of this Rover squad. Here's Dylan playing it along the deck for Proctor, who is offside. Proctor appears to sub now in his, his fifth game of the season. Yet to start, but obviously uh, some good players ahead of him in uh, Habibula. Edwardson. 
as well as Keji Adzini, who's on the pitch as a right winger here. Poor shoved to the ground by Zohar. The free kick here for altitude. Four minutes to be added on here at uh, the 90. Benet Rovers dominated second half here. Two goals in this second frame of play. David Rodriguez will play this ball ahead for altitude. Good delivery in. Flicked on by Kanate and grabbed by Connor Adams. He lets it go off his chest, though, to drain some time. Watch closely by Giram George as Adams throws it ahead for Holton. And now Sigal up in the air. Make that grant for Hooven. And to help out was the hail. Overlapping run from Raphael George. There was Holton as well. Now Anastasia Hale for altitude, trying to whip one into the back post. Adams was up there, punches it clear, but not fully clear as the danger. Here's Kanate, one-on-one -on -one with Dylan. In close proximity, nudged away by Holton. George will let it drop for Hale. Makes a move to the outside as Anastasia Hale back across goal, away by Holton, and flicked away by Barrett fully into touch for an altitude throw. Raphael George will take. For Caleb Valance from outside the 18, away by Adzini. For Mejia, looks like he might have been offside, but he does really well to dance the line. Mejia on a breakaway for TSS to make it for the day. Ivan Mejia slides it in. A picture-perfect goal from Ivan Mejia. Goes over the Swan Guardians again, and it's another 4-0 lead here for the Rovers at home, and that surely sharpens the pencil on the day for TSS here in the added time of the second half. But Mejia with pace to burn right past Schneider. And Ivan Mejia scoring his fourth goal in his last four games. Now up to three on the season. Make that four the season. And Ivan Mejia danced the line perfectly to stay on side. Judged it well. Got past Walters, and this will be the third, if the score stands for that matter, the third 4-0 win at home this season for TSS. Dispatching Unity and Harborside by the same score. And what a day for TSS, and a tough one for Altitude, but they do meet again next Sunday, and I know Altitude, for a fact, will be motivated for that one. Make sure to get out to Kinsman. Watch uh, later on YouTube as well. Raphael George lost it. Holton for Verhoeven. Overlapping run from Kian Proctor. It's Verhoeven will find Sagawa. Sagawa pulled at a player there. That was Valance. And a free kick for altitude late on here. A hail out wide for Raphael George. Trying to whip one in. Great ball away by Barrett. I find Sagawa. Foul there by Rodriguez and a late free kick for TSS as time winds down this could be the Rovers first ever win against Altitude and that is it the Rovers 4-0 winners over the Altitude FC squad from North Vancouver Three second-half goals propel the Rovers to victory today. And uh, it was tight after 45, but uh, a good job by TSS. And Darren Rushers coached 40 to 50 games against Fally Bass in his time with the Rovers Academy. And it leads the team to victory today as the red smoke goes off from behind the Swan Guardians there. Lots of hugs and jubilation in the Rovers squad to continue their strong play at home. Still one more home game to go next Wednesday against the Whitecaps, but a good day here at Swangard for TSS, and you have to like what you're seeing as of late for Darren Rusher's squad, but a dejected altitude squad. You have to hold your heads high if you're altitude. They were in there for 45 minutes, and I really like the game they played when they had the four subs come on. They really changed the dynamic and the tactics and made it difficult in TSS, to be honest, in the last 20 to 25 minutes, despite the goals, they just kept pressing. They're never a team that gives up, but 
Valley Bass will be happy with his team's performance. As TSS become 4 nothing winners, their first ever win against Altitude in their third ever meeting. They were 3-1 losers last year in North Van and nil-nil here on the second last home game of the year last July. But today we're not to be denied. And uh, four different goal scores for TSS. They had a penalty save. Could have been five at that point in the 63rd for Trevor Schneider. But uh, he denied them. And still could be in the Gatorade before the match if he was, uh, regardless of the scoreline, he was excellent on the day for Altitude FC, the two-time Team of the Week keeper, also a former Victoria Highlander here uh, last season. Plays in Texas as well, his college. As we have Jake McGrail on the sideline with today's hero, Eric Edwardson, coming up here from Swangard Stadium. Edwardson, two points today, one goal, one assist. Let's hear from Jake with Eric Edwardson, today's hero. Jake. I'm here with the TSS Rovers captain and scorer of their second goal today, Eric Edwardson. And Eric, you guys didn't sit on your lead in the second half. You kept going forward, ended up scoring three more goals in the second, keeping the clean sheet as well. How were you able to just take full control of the game there at the end? Yeah, I think, uh, you know what, like uh, the first half was a little bit sloppy on our part. Um, but I think in the second half, yeah, like you say, we took a bit more control. Um, touches were a little bit cleaner and we were just a little bit. Um, purposeful with our possession and uh, yeah finished our chances so uh, just a great game it took you guys a couple weeks this season to get going in league play but you've now won four of your last five and now that we're at about the halfway point of the season what's the confidence level with this team as you try and repeat as league champions yeah the confidence is high with the guys I think yeah obviously for sure like at the beginning of the season we dropped a couple results we weren't happy with but um, this team just has such an elite mindset I think uh, we just kind of always look to the next one we believe in each other a ton of guys in here should be playing at the next level so we all have that mindset that you know what like every time we step on the pitch we've got to do a job and yeah like every win just gives it that little bit extra so uh yeah we're rolling this league is so competitive you know like you have to show up every week so uh we just got to keep doing that thank you so much uh, great win today oh, thank you so much Thank you for that, Jake. As we bring you back to Swangard Stadium, a good day at the office for TSS. As Eric Edwardson will now go celebrate with the Swan Guardians. Puts another goal in the net, does Edwardson. Continues his strong play. He's motivated to get to the next level, that's for sure. As there's Devin O'Hay as well, unable to play this year due to injury. He was a hero last year for TSS. And the Swan Guardians celebrate. What a great day at Woods for TSS. Javi Bula in the first half for TSS. And he continues his strong play, third goal in his last two appearances for Javi Bula. Edwardson had a banger in the second half, one of three in the second stanza play for TSS. Kyle Jones did have a penalty saved, and he would later put a goal home after a mistake at the back line for altitude in the 85th minute. But a good day today for TSS. They win their first ever game against Altitude FC, 4-0. Four different goal scorers propelled them to victory. Our next League One BC feature match is June 24th. But for now, I want to thank the Roll Focus staff for the production value today. And TSS and Altitude, your final score, Rovers 4, Altitude nil. You've been watching League One BC feature match on YouTube and Telesoptic TV.